Hi, my name is Gary, and I am a public school math and science teacher. And I'm going to show you this model of uh, physics that my students and I have been working on. I've been working at uh, tooling this together for about a decade. And um, this simulates the uh, four forces of physics from one equation using something called a cellular automaton. Now, this it was inspired by uh, Albert Einstein, John Van Neumann, Stephen Wolfram, and, uh, and Mavericks like uh, Sabina Hassenfelder and uh, Eric Weinstein. And uh, I'll tell you how it works. So the idea is to, of course, simulate the four fundamental forces of physics. Uh, but to do that, what I did is I thought from uh, first principles, so principles that were uh, even deeper than what I was thinking of as the four fundamental forces. So these are locality, uh, 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 conservation, uh, consistency, symmetry, uh, interactivity, and then at least uh, four dimensions and then scale and uh, variability in the sense that even though the rules of the automaton are the same everywhere, that the, uh, the distribution of, of energy matter is, it, it varies across space. So this had to be kind of for two. And so uh, I'll tell you how it works. So it's actually done in Excel, and it's kind of a funny story because this is something I've been trying to do for, uh, do, create a simulation like this for around a decade, right? And uh, I was inspired by uh, Wolfram, Stephen Wolfram, and Cellular Automaton. And I was sure that an automaton had to be used for this because of locality and, and simultaneity, by the way, that's another big one. So, so uh, when you're thinking of first principles, another really big one is simultaneity that everything appears to be happening at the same time, everywhere in the universe. So cellular automaton felt very natural. And I was writing out on graph paper, and it occurred to me, why don't I just do this in Excel? <laughs> so, and so I started using Excel, and it worked out really great. So I'll show you how it works. So we have different fields here. The equation is actually very simple. The equation is essentially just this local universe, the simulated universe is energy divided by space. So U equals E over S. Um, but to get that to actually run within a computer, you know, this human tool we call a computer, it takes some kind of uh, jerry-rigging. So what's going on here is here we can see the equation, it's just averaging. Uh, every cell is just averaging its local neighborhood. And uh, there are there are perhaps better ways to do this uh, using um, a unit circle. I think a unit circle is better, but I'm just I'm going to show you uh, a simplified model, and then uh, we can later maybe you can reach out to me if you if you want to reach out to me you can. We could talk about unit circles and things like that using that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so what's going on? It's just this cell, you know, is is averaging its local neighborhood. It's just averaging. That's it. It's, it's adding its local, it's called the von, uh, von Neumann neighborhood. It's just averaging it. You might be like, why average? Um, well, because averaging conserves the total value of the whole universe here. Uh, so, there, so you might be wondering, what's it averaging? It's, val it's averaging real numbers. Okay, so this is what is called a continuous cellular automaton. Now, for years, I was trying to create something like this using binary automatons, you know, black and white squares, and then uh, arrows, and then um, I stumbled upon this passage. It was a note, I think, in, in uh, Wolfram's um, A New Kind of Science about continuous automaton. And I was just uh, fooling around with continuous automaton, and I could see the wave pattern forming uh, using continuous automaton, just doing these by hand. And that's when I was like, oh, Excel. It just it clicked. Excel. Do this in Excel. And uh, it has to be, this is referencing here, and this is referencing up here. They're referencing each other. It has to be this way. You can think of like time steps. This is 1T. This is 2T, 3, 4, 5. They, they, it ping pongs back and forth. It has to be this way. Other, otherwise, because computers compute sequentially, it becomes distorted. So it has to be, it has to complete all the computations and then push it out to here, completes all the computations, pushes it out to here, back and forth. It has to do this because of limitations of computation, uh, computer processing. Otherwise, it, it gets distorted like a funhouse mirror. Okay, so now where does it go from there? 
So then it goes over to here. And to understand the data, so let's just let's just show how this works. So let's imagine that well, some energy appears. And by the way, it has to be real number values, positive and negative. If you only use if you only use um, positive or negative, then it rapidly reaches equilibrium. So do you see do you see the wave patterns forming? So I saw this when I was doing the calculations by hand, and I was like, oh my goodness. And if you apply, you see it? If, if you apply a heat map to this, then you can actually see it. And and so what's going on over here is time step one and time step two are just subtracting it from each other. And this is what we think of as times. So we subtract time one and time two. That gives us the difference. And the difference is what we think of as time, right? So like a, 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 um, a day is not any one time. It is actually the difference between two configurations of energy matter, right? When the Earth has moved from one configuration of energy matter to another, we subtract the difference. We're like, oh, the Earth has, has rotated once. Okay, it's a day. Now, what's going on here? People always have trouble with this. What's going on here is this is what is called the, uh, the vector layer. So why vectors? Because once we have determined, you know, the difference between every cell, then we can point to, we can use that greatest, these differences to create a vector layer, basically a flow of motion, all right? The universe has kind of got a, like a flow to it, right? Like if you think of an electromagnetic field, it has a certain kind of, it has a flow. So how do we represent this flow? We use vectors, these arrows. And uh, these vectors are actually wingdings fonts. So like Microsoft Word wingdings. So the joke is that the universe runs on wingdings in Excel. It, it's just, and um, we have zero, uh, I have zero uh, funding, right? So if anyone, by the way, if anyone's looking at this and like, wow, we could scale this up with supercomputers. And, yes, we could. <laughs> Give me some funding. This was zero funding. Imagine what we could do with funding. Oh my goodness. You know, wingdings in Excel. You know, <laughs> imagine with supercomputers. And so now what happens is, is that, uh, the vectors it differentiates between and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to imagine oh we had like an energy pulse and now when i pull this down it's going to remove that energy pulse and then and then we're going to see what happens so so um so what's going on is each cell, it's, it's kind of confusing. I lose a lot of people here. But what's, what's going on, it's really not that difficult. What, what's going on is that each cell is looking around at its neighbors and saying, where was the biggest change? Remember, it's referencing up here. It's looking at the change from its own perspective and saying, where was the biggest change? And if it looks around and the biggest change is negative, then the vector arrow points towards that uh, cell and if the biggest change was positive then it points away and this is like kind of like fluid dynamics in a, in a little bit there's like a lot of fluid dynamics principles that go into this which is that you know if there's a, a large positive change then it's pushing outward and it's negative then it's then it's inward right and and it it actually works it's the remarkable thing it's not, it's just not, it's not a matter of like z zero to some number on a number line. Like the automaton is able to differentiate between negative and positive numbers. It, it has an actual effect. It's really r interesting. And um, now you can see here that we basically have a particle, right? That's all that's going on here. Like, like if you, if you try and calculate too fast, it'll screw up because the computer is kind of slow. So Every time I click calculate now, and um, yeah, so look, we now we essentially have a particle. And if you look at the vector arrows, these are actually arrows, right? So you can zoom in. And um, one moment. 
see what I can remember. Okay. Yeah. So it has to, uh, it's called um, con concat. These, that's why there's so many of these, and there's more over here too. They concassinate, I believe is the word, on top of each other and over here. It has to do it this way because of Excel. Like it's like, it's, Excel wasn't made to create a, a physics simulation. So I have to use all these tricks. I had to like kind of figure this all out. And um, so it has to concassinate. It's taking these cells. But really all that's happening is it, it is dividing each, each cell is just averaging with its local neighborhood. It's determining the difference between two subsequent time steps and then it's pointing with an arrow at the greatest or least change that's it that's it and doing that we have uh look it's like a stable particle and look the if you look at the vectors they're they're like circling it yeah and so everything you've seen in, in, in the video earlier with the um, with with the particles like attracting and um, and the uh, electromagnetic uh, like the uh, electrons and in in uh, photons like all this stuff and like the fields uh, you know this was all just coming out of this and you can see like if we add I don't know a negative. It's just what happens when you add different, uh, you know, numbers into here. But there's no tricks here. There's no tricks here. It, it's really, it just happens. It's emergent. And you can reach out to me with any questions whatsoever. I just think it's fun. And so, did I, uh, yeah. Yeah. So now look, now because it was negative and a positive, they should like um, kind of form this like electromagnetic like field from positive to negative. And the, and the, vectors, will all, the, the vectors will all line up. And I can talk about uh, uh, the, the space-time like uh, grid. Actually, I'll say that really quick, that if you invert this and you make each cell, each cell size equal to its uh, energy uh, matter density, energy density, then you you have Einstein's warp classic warp warp space time like it turns it, it, it you you all of a sudden have created that just requires more um more steps you know but you could do that you you could make each one of these numbers equal to the size and then the, it scales proportional to the size and then it's like well why then can you not combine relativity and particle physics because when you invert the automaton this way, it, there are no particles. Like <laughs> a particle is just its well or its peak within the uh, within the space time fabric. So yeah, it's like there's no particles. You can't. You, there's nothing to. You know, there there is different ways of looking at the universe. Different models. They're all just models, right? So I mean, if you have any questions, just reach out. And it's fun. Could be all wrong. Just fine. Anyway, okay, bye.